Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight I would like to introduce a new archangel to our collection that we have been discussing. And tonight is Archangel Sariel. Uh, and there's a bunch of names that are out there and I'm not going to go through all of them because when you start to go into these other names you actually find out they're different entities so <laughs> we're gonna stick with Sariel but and it can also be said Suriel which is S-U-R-I-E-L um, and there is a fallen name angel by a very similar name and I'll mention that at the end but that's not the topic of today's discussion we're going with the the good angels today. So Sariel's name literally means God's command or God's prince, which are both exceptionally powerful meanings. Uh, another way to interpret the name is the prince of God who sees all. In Arabian tra traditions, his name uh, has the definition of helper of God. And so you see right off the bat, this particular angel is in a different class. We're talking one of the higher frequency angels. Um, not exactly a canon angel, but there's a lot of other potential with that. And when I speak of the canon, I'm talking the modern day Bible or in um, the standard canon that we use today. Uh, you can also see this angel as either male or female. Probably a good 75% of the traditions that I've went over and researched and dug into see him as male but there's also a similar vibe with the feminine and as we go through some of his um, abilities and practices you'll understand where that more feminine energy can come in and in this particular one it's kind of like Archangel Gabriel where the same name can be either masculine or feminine um, as I've said with the Archangel Gabriel video I see Gabriel almost exclusively as female. I never see her show up as a male. For Sariel, as I was going through it, majority of what comes up is um, of the male, but there are people who see him as uh, in the more feminine aspects. And so we have this angel here as one of the representations of Sariel. Um, and it's kind of an interesting one done in an older style, but it's n it can be seen as accurate, but there's when we get into the description, you'll see why that's not quite the best dis uh, version. Um, interestingly enough, Sariel is not a canon angel, modern day Bible, but he is from the Judaic tradition. So we're talking the, some of the apocryphal texts and some of the heretical texts. Um, and I haven't read enough of them to be able to give you exact locations, but I do know that his name is in there. There are some paths of thought that say he is also similar to or related to Archangel Azrael or Archangel Ariel, the female version of Uriel, but that's not quite accurate either um, because there's a lot of places like in the Book of Enoch and some of the other ones where he's referenced by his own name in association or separated from Azrael or Ariel. So they, the modern day view of these angels is, oh, they sound similar or look similar, so we're going to put them as the same person. No, there's <laughs> literally billions upon trillions upon trillions of angels. Why are you trying to make them all into like a set seven or eight? But that's what they do. <laughs> so Sariel is seen as one of the seven angels who watch. And this puts him into an entirely different class. We're not dealing with a strictly archangel style entity here. As an angel who watch, they he is one of the seven watchers. This means he is one of the class of beings, not so much angels, that had the ability to interbreed with humans. And according to all of the lore about Sariel specifically, he did not fall. And in the book of Enoch, he is seen as the angel who, by his holiness, is set over the spirits who sin um, in the spirit, meaning they, they have 
the darker thoughts, the evil thoughts. It's not so much a physical action, it's the, the mental and emotional buildup of karma type energy of the negativity. That's what Sariel's um, there to help kind of corral and redirect. And if the angels fall, as his some of his brethren of the Watchers did, he is the one who has to track them. And track them he does. <laughs> he is um, very ruthless when he is going after someone who has done evil or uh, committed harm against another. He also is one of the guardians of the gates of heaven. So very powerful angel we're talking about. Um, Enoch, in his book, says that Sariel watches the bloodshed of Earth with the archangels of the four quarters, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. He's kind of on par with them, but as I said, he's set aside because he is a watcher and not specifically an arch. Even though I do reference him through the, this discussion as an archangel, he's good to remember that he does kind of set himself aside because he's... Uh, one of the arc, uh, one of the watchers. He is also one of Sariel is one of the nine angels who rules the zodiac sign of Aries, and I didn't realize there was nine of them for Aries, but yes, there are. Uh, and he also presides over the summer solstice events, and that will be weird in a moment because I'm going to get into why the summer solstice, big solar event, um, doesn't make. <laughs> It makes sense in one way because he is of the, the energy of the high arcs, but he's also a watcher, so his ability to generate light is really comparable to none other but those high frequency angels. So that part makes sense, but like I said, we'll get into why that's a little bit shocking to me when I first figured this out. Um, if you happen to see uh, Sariel show up in meditation, there's a couple of different ways he tends to show up. He can show up as either an ox or a ram. The ram is generally why he's attributed to the sign of Aries. Aries is the fiery ram. Um, and Sariel also, if he shows up in a more human form, which is preferred in most instances, we'll pop up this little picture. We're, we're going to describe this, but we're going to do it with the descriptions and some of the texts. Uh, he can show up with wings spread wide obviously by the picture here there we go <laughs> and sword drawn ready for a fight and of course the angels just don't have you know two wings he has 12 or six pair depending on how you choose to say that uh his wings are deep silver or a dark gray depending on the reference because there's references to both colors so we'll go with that uh he also tends to show up in the form of a handsome young man is one of the descriptions the primary descriptions late teens mid 20s kind of like this dude here very built um dark hair but his eyes and this is a unique thing and the watchers all have kind of unique eyes that i've read about um there his entire eye it's not pupil it's all silver which would make a very intimidating thing to look into um and his skin is said to be very pale, which with the dark hair, silver eyes, that white skin, 12 silverish wings, um, that would be a very terrifying thing to have show up and if you're not prepared for it. In some descriptions, he's wearing a th uh, thin jacket with a fur lining, generally the jacket, and this is a little bit out of character, but it kind of makes sense with the wing colors, uh, is light gray all the way up to white. and Generally, he'll have a black shirt underneath this with um, darker trousers or in the robes of more black with this white fur accent or silver accent. So he's very intimidating in how he shows up, but he does that on purpose. <laughs> Zariel has some association, and this is why he does it on purpose. He has associations with the days of judgment at the end of time or the end of days, depending on how you view this. One of the sources I was reading says he will be the one who blows the final trumpet in the book of Revelation. Seven trumpets, he's number seven, basically. Or, I think. <laughs> I didn't put the notes in my um, notes, but he's the one who blows the final trumpet. This could also be a time when dead are being resurrected. So, 
he's got an interesting task here. In some traditions, Sariel is seen as the angel of death, which is why when the dead come back, it's at his beck and call because he's the one who shipped them over there in the first place. Uh, but he's not the angel of death in the dark way. Like Azrael and some of the other ones are a little bit more mysterious. They're very quiet. They're not evil, but you definitely get that shuddery vibe when they're around. Um, Sariel is seen as a guide to the souls to the next life. He offers them hope and comfort as they pass over. And he also, by his very presence, can help comfort those who are left behind in the physical land of existence. Um, they All the angels of death kind of have this vibe. Sariel's, though, is not so exclusive to following the death over, guiding the death to the next life. He can do both that, and he also can be uh, the comforter to help process what is happening in the physical world. So he's a good one to call upon if you're going through some hard times, especially if you've lost someone or someone is approaching the end of their existence. Um, calling upon Sariel with your other guides and guardians um, is a way to help understand the transition. And maybe if the person is, you know, not coherent or uh, like a comatose type patient, Sariel is a good one to help you connect with that person through meditation, through um, dreams are another good way to help say any last words and know that the person is understanding them. Sariel has a lot of gentle energy in this aspect. So for those dealing with things in the more uh, dark end of life type situations, Sariel is a, actually a good good one to work with because he is so gentle about his presence. Um, he wants to help the transition between life and death be as gentle and quiet as possible. The dream of just going to sleep and passing over, that's what his goals are for us when we get to that point. He wants to help the soul understand what happened, especially if it's something a little more tragic, why it happened, and process through the grief and the shock of <laughs> that transition. Uh, he's also a great comforter during this time. So if the soul is really struggling with, well, what about my family? What about this? What about that? He can help bring you to them as a soul through the dreams and, you know, those little uh, feelings of that other person's presence, the scent of cologne or perfume, that uh, impression that that person is standing off to the side. Those are all things that he can help facilitate so you can understand in the physical world why this had to happen. Uh, he is good with doing this type of work because he's an exceptionally empathic angel. He can understand the feelings of the person or the soul and he can help the person process for that person the best way to see this person. Um, their family member that's left or to help the soul understand this is why and this is what's going to happen with them and help e both parties to the loss go through the grieving period. It's not easy and then no one's ever said it is. He is here to help help you understand the reasons and the whys and work through the process, the stages of grief, the denial, the anger, the frustration, the sorrow, the lack, the, all, all of that, he can help you as you're going through that. And don't fear reaching out for help, therapy, or a counselor. That's what they're there for, but Serial is a good way to bring in some more angelic help to process some of these darker energies. And when you are going through some of this these transitions in life whether it's life and death different jobs he can help you live the life that you have been dreaming of now this is a little bit different because he's very empathic in this so it's the dream your subconscious your soul's based goals dreams and ambitions your dream life in the context of Sariel is going to be in most instances vastly different than the ones that your conscious mind where you do your vision boards and your plans and your five ten year 
things like that, which <laughs> don't always go to plan, but it's because you have a subconscious plan as well. You have a soul-guided alignment, and that's what Sariel can help bring into the physical. And I'll be 100% honest, this is probably the reason I've ended up in some of the weird situations I have, because I've had some very specific goals, dreams, and ambitions, and almost to a one. They have been derailed, shifted, something else has caught my attention, but the life that I'm living at the moment is actually more in line with what my soul, my meditation, and higher self through meditation is kind of guiding me towards. Everyone's going to be a little bit different, but that's the type of thing that Sariel is going to help you understand. Yeah, you could have all of the big fancy stuff, that's fine, but is your soul being fed? Is this your soul's journey? That takes an entirely different path, and that's where Sariel can come in and help integrate the two visions so instead of having con conflict, they can actually merge and be a better image to work with. Um, so I love little factoids. <laughs> and when I'm doing research like this, I tend to run across some really random little side notes. Uh, this one in particular I thought was cool. Archangel Sariel is said to be one of the angels that carried the prophet Enoch to heaven to escape death. Powerful angels just in general, but when we're talking Sariel, he was kind of the guide to help um, Enoch. When you look at the book of Enoch, go through the heavenly courts um, and how he would be brought back to say his peace and then return back to the heaven, heavens. Um, Sariel is also the angel or one of the angels that brought Adam and Eve to the Garden of Eden after they were created. They were created outside the garden in some stories and some of the older lore, and they were brought to the garden, which was a place created for them in their purity. That's one of the things that Sariel did was help bring them to that place of the Garden of Purity where Adam and Eve in their sinless state could exist. But you know how that went. Uh, <laughs> Early Christian scholars would say he's one of the seven angels who preside over the primordial powers. Um, sounds to me like a good foundational angel to work with. Primordial powers get you in line with you know the deeper stuff, get a good foundation built so you can expand upwards from there. In some of the more Gnostic traditions, he is seen as a mighty protector, still going along with what we've talked about already with him. Um, and this is also where we tie him back to working alongside Archangel Azrael. He is not the same. He works next to with and in this vein, protecting, guiding souls, helping them understand what happened, why, etc., etc. In addition to being a mighty protector, Sariel is also said to guide humanity towards positive outcomes working with your soul to bring the spiritual dreams into fruition. He wants the best for us. That's a huge aspect of who he is. And he helps defend us against the evil or the negative that is coming against us. I am a firm believer, because of some experiences I've had, that there are two primary forces in the world. We have the forces of good and we have the forces of evil. We've got God, angels, and all the divine guides and guardians. We also have a form of evil, however you want to say that, Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, etc. And we have the demonic forces working against the light. That is something I have been very strong feeling my entire life. I don't agree with some of the people who are like, oh, it's just the um, lesser aspects. Mm, there's more to it. And that's something that Sariel can actually help keep that at bay you're never going to be completely free of it as long as you exist in this plane because that's one of the lessons we have to work through but he's a good one to bring it in and help or bring in the peace and defend against the rest of it in the book of enoch chapter 8 sariel is said to have taught humans the courses and powers of the moon as i said before the fact that he is the angel that guides the um summer solstice is a little bit weird because that's a solar event but in chapter 8 of the and I'm linked this in the description in first the first book of Enoch chapter 8 
Oh, where was it? Do, 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 do. We are going through the section that's talking about the different angels and their powers. Um, uh, do, do, do. Ezekiel is the knowledge of the clouds. Arachiel is the signs of the earth. Uh, Samsiel is the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the courses of the moon. And he was teaching this as a the calendars of the moon, the lunar cycles. So if you are drawn to connecting with or kind of vibe with um, lunar goddess energy or lunar deity energy, because there are a few moon gods, there's just, they're not as, uh, what's well, not as common as the solar gods and lunar goddesses, but they do exist. So if you are feeling more drawn to the lunar aspects, Sariel's another good angel to work with. Um, it's also said that he taught some of this lunar knowledge as a forbidden knowledge. Um, and I find this weird, but this really became a big thing as the Catholic Church rose to power in the 600 AD through, well, <laughs> we'll just go to mid-1700s when this was a problem. You can check out my other <laughs> series and videos on that topic. But knowledge of the moon during that time, its cycles, its abilities, its worship, or its uh, use in mysticism or magic or healing was actually an illegal offense and did not bring good things to people. But this is one of the places where Sariel kind of, well not kind of, he excels. So if you work with the moon and you really want to tap into that energy, he's a good one to go into. This is also, I think, personally, where they get the image of Sariel as feminine is because of the association with the moon. But like I said, there's also lunar gods, so you can pick and choose on that one. <laughs> uh, but tying into some of our themes of protection, there is a tradition out there who's used Sariel's name, along with Michael, Gabriel, and others of the warring uh, angels, on their shields carried as charms. I did put a charm in the uh, description of this video. You can check it out if you're interested. There's a few other ones out there, but a lot of them were more focused on the grief of loss. This one's actually uh, more for protection in general. There are also various grimoire style books that talk about Sar Sariel. Um, one of them, and I have this somewhere in my storage unit. I had to double check it through an online source. Um, but it calls Sariel, one of the angels of the eighth month, called the month of Marquesanon uh, Heshvan. And I probably said that wrong, but <laughs> he is in that vein of thought, c tied more to the Gnostic uh, practices. And he is there to protect you from the Archons, which are basically dark entities, not quite demonic, but heading that way very fast. And they feed on your aura and your energy, your dreams, your positive vibes. They feed on your light, basically. And um, Sariel actually can keep them at bay and send them back to the darkness from whence they came. Sariel has healing abilities. All the angels do to a different extent. Sariels are very much emotional and spiritually based healing abilities. He helps us through the passing of loved ones, as I've said before, but he also can help us find balance and peace within ourselves. If you're struggling with, I don't know what decision to make, I feel really out of balance, my work-life thing is totally trashed, um, all of that, you get that anxiety because you're overthinking and it's just building up and it's getting worse and worse and worse. Serial can help calm the chaos, silence that monkey chatter that goes on up here for some of us, and bring it into a state of what is important in this moment. Set the rest of it aside. Yesterday's <laughs> fears and concerns are yesterday's. Leave them there. What are you dealing with in the moment? What is directly in front of you? When you start to do that, you bring yourself into that now state. That helps you find balance. When you are in balance, you tend to be more peaceful and more calm. And that's one of the beauties of working with a lot of the angels, Sariel in particular, because <laughs> that's what we're talking about today. Um, and when you call upon Sariel, he can help you find 
peace and balance and understand the cycles of life because you have ups you have downs there's always that wheel that ever is turning but as you find more balance instead of being out on the edge being flung back and forth through all the energies you're able to come closer to the center in the center is balance in the center is peace everything moves around you at that point and you can breathe and observe and exist outside of all the chaos kind of like being the calm in the eye of a hurricane <laughs> um, he heals through bringing peace in tough times as well there's challenges in life um, there are things that have happened in my personal life I don't talk about that on here but there's times when you have you're just in those rough periods it feels like the world is piling up against you you're suffering under the weight of depression anxiety um, losing a job losing friends or family passing them over things like that where you just you don't know if you can get up in the morning you don't know how you're going to combat the situation at your job at your profession of some form whatever it is so you're dealing with a lot of intensity he can help bring peace in those times but also help you understand this is what led to here and this is how we get out of here this is what you're going to learn from situation nothing in life in my personal opinion happens outside of a lesson we put ourselves through actions words deeds etc and sometimes it's subconscious programming and things like that into situations situation happens tends to be bad lots of drama stressed out like ah what have I done there's a lesson to be learned in each of those situations you will not figure it out in the moment <laughs> you have to survive that first but once you get survive it once you get through it on the other side that's when Sariel can be like okay now you're here this is why this happened <laughs> and it helps us understand the growth of our soul which is just like with Metatron and Sandalphon, that is a big focus for Sariel. And I found this really beautiful thought about Sariel going along with this. And it is said that his heart breaks for the pain of humanity. When the pain builds up to the point where he weeps, as tears fall from his face, they strike a man, which is the original quote, but we'll add or woman, <laughs> And all sins are purified of that person before the throne. I thought that was one of the most beautiful ways to describe this angel because that's what he is here. To, he wants to help us understand our lives, what's going on, why it's happening, what can we learn, how can we grow from this, because he wants us all to be able to stand before the throne of God in purity. That is amazing. And you can use whatever deity you choose at that point, or you can go with the uh, source of all creation. But that's what he wants is us to be in a state where we can actually step into that type of frequency. Um, and this is something, again, we're kind of going with a theme where, right now with the healing aspect. Sariel can help sorting chaos. <laughs> that's kind of life at times and in some sources he is called the housekeeper of heaven I would love to hire this housekeeper uh, <laughs> he likes everything in its place he's very neat he's very tidy uh, you could call it OCD by modern standards if your life is feeling a little bit chaotic a little bit out of control or a lot out of control things are falling apart piling up crashing back in and it just feels like you can't get ahead because there's just no organization or there's no focus on anything. Sariel can actually help you sort things out. He's not going to do all the work for you. Don't get me wrong. He probably could. He's not going to. But he wants you to find the pattern, understand why this is happening the way it is, and then find balance within the chaos. There's times where all of a sudden you're doing one thing, you turn around half an hour later and you've cleaned an entire room and you do not remember doing it. You just put one thing back and you put the next thing back and you dusted that shelf and all of a sudden, room's done. It is an amazing feeling. So if you're working with trying to clean up your physical space or your mental space, but they're this one they're wanting to really focus on the physical, um, 
put on some awesome music, put on your earbuds, whatever, close the door so no one can see how your, your awesome rock and dance moves, and go to town. Get things cleaning, ask Archangel Sariel to come in and help guide you, and do the thing. Again, physical or mental chaos, it doesn't really matter. He can help you organize all of it. That's one of the beauties of being an Archangel, but also being one of the Watchers, is he can pass back and forth between the realms really easy. Going along with that theory, um, Sariel is seen as rubbing shoulders with Michael, Metatron, Sandalphon, that class of the Cherubim, the Thrones, etc., and the Seraphim, um, as angels who are able to walk into the throne room of God Source Divine and speak directly to the Source God of everything. He has the ability to walk and speak directly to the heart of the Creator Himself. And that's just a generic term. The way I've, and I've talked about this before, I'm th pretty sure, when I look at the way I see the divine, the divine is just this infinite being of energy, of love, of compassion and joy. We understand it through the faces of a god and a goddess, a lord and lady, and then it filters down through there. Our minds, and I'm not saying this to be rude, but as a rule, our minds cannot even begin to comprehend the slightest drop of s anything from the source. It is such a powerful massive energetic being we're all tied to it but trying to understand it's a little tricky but that's where serial can actually walk into that presence and speak directly to it this is where we have this powerful powerful angel that stands head and shoulders up beyond a lot of the others but he's up there with good 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 uh, teammates you know michael and metatron sandalfon etc serial is also even though he's that that big and that strong and that everything else he's known to be very kind and very friendly with those who call upon him and there are there's a theory that he's so friendly that he's just a pushover <laughs> and that is nothing to be anywhere near the truth Sario is very sweet very gentle very kind but he has the brooding aspect of that as well empaths all have a brood to them and that's just what they are and if you push someone who is so gentle so kind and so compassionate too far especially an angel who's also a watcher his wrath it is said will rival any of the other angels at their worst he can level cities he could destroy planets if he is enraged keep him on the good side <laughs> um he's just that everyone anyone who thinks that because he's so gentle compassionate and all of that that he would not be able to wage war is completely wrong a uh, good good rule of thumb with any of the um, niceties in life the nicest beings the kindest souls can have the worst wrath when provoked they in most cases understand pain that's why they choose to be kind they understand sorrow because they've been hurt that's why they want to be compassionate but that does not mean <laughs> that they are gentle when provoked because they can do a lot of damage um, but again he's a protecting angel what did you expect right uh, another aerial uh, aerial another area if I could talk that can be benefited by calling on Sariel is the seeking of wisdom or enlightenment. Going back to school, studying a new course, really diving into a new practice. This is a place where he can step up. He's not an initiator. That's not what his vibe is. He carries knowledge. It is said that he holds the keys to all secret knowledge. Well, you're tying him with Sandalphon and Metatron. What did you expect, right? Um, and with that vein of thought, he's not going to hand it out gently we're definitely going to the metatron aspect here you have to be worthy or of high enough vibration to access the knowledge that he keeps this concept is kind of tied to gnosticism and you have to be willing and able to do the spiritual growth do the spiritual work excel and ascend but that's also where you bring in metatron because he's 
going to help you take the steps to get there. Sariel is the one that's guarding the gates to the actual wisdom. So there's a lot of tie backs and mixes in and we're expanding our angel family through all of this. There are some traditions um, and this is where we get into some of the more questionable theories because if you if you're not looking for the right spelling of a name because literally an angel's name and a demon's name can be two letters apart so you definitely want to make sure you're looking for the correct spelling of these angels and beings there are some traditions some of the more uh, darker occult ones that tr don't see a difference between the fallen watcher Sahariel S-A-H-A-R-I-E-L or the Archangel Positive Watcher who did not fall, Sariel, S-A-R-I-E-L. In the fallen one, you got two extra letters, so pay attention to who you're working with. Uh, <laughs> in this particular version, we're just going over the positive ones, we're not going into the darker stuff, but in books like The Lesser Key of Solomon, um, just as a reference point, the uh, fallen watcher Sahariel is under the Duke of Ast oh, good grief. Asteliel and Gediel. But we're going to go over all that stuff later um, if you guys are interested in that. And there's also in the darker aspects a lore and I'm assuming that this I haven't dug into this too much because I just keep finding references to it but I'm assuming this lore comes from that time period where teaching of the moon was illegal um, Sahar uh, Sariel was actually classified as a dark deity is something to be feared and trembled up before as in like run away from don't talk to don't look at but like I said I'm pretty sure when I get into that we're gonna find that that's not as old of a lore as we would think so we're not doing that direction tonight um, if you decide you wish to work with Archangel um, Sariel or the Watcher Sariel depending on how you view him um, you can use things like silver candles or white candles either or um, if you're using the silver try to find a darker silver kind of a metallic gray would be a good one as well um, it's best when you're first introducing yourself to him to work under the light of the moon cycle doesn't matter preferably not the dark moon but any of the waxing or full moons are a good time just to kind of touch in, see how you feel. Um, simple prayers as in, dear holy source of everything, um, please bring in Archangel Sariel and introduce us so that I may build a relationship with this angel. If you are in the middle of a um, rough patch, you've just lost someone, there's some frustrations with that, you can simply say Archangel Sariel help me guide me and then pay attention to what's going on it might be a feather just randomly shows up it might be a dream you might feel a physical presence a touch on your shoulder um, that's actually a pretty common one with angels when you first start working with them is this feeling of just someone placing their hand on your shoulder and it's a gentle touch it's not scary it might shock you because you're like there's no one here what's just happened <laughs> but it's that type of work is their introduction that's one of their ways they introduce themselves if you reach out to Sariel especially during the light of a moon and you're trying to connect and you don't have any immediate response through meditation or anything else go to bed because he'll talk to you in your dreams you may not remember them the next day but you might notice there's little synchronicities that balance a situation that you may understand a tr trial you've been dealing with in a better way you may actually end up with a solution the next day the angels always respond it's just a matter of are we paying attention and they don't always talk in gra grand booming voices they don't always talk like a lot of people who do readings and channeling that's rare to be honest with you in today's world doesn't mean it won't get more common later but for now it's kind of rare but it doesn't mean the angels don't respond your subconscious is a great place for them to get the information to you your dreams little signs and symbols are all over the place when we're talking about Archangel Sariel again it's feathers we're dealing with angels um, specifically darker gray ones 
silver ones. There are silver feathers from different birds that look silvery, I should say. Um, pay attention to those. If you feel a little cool breeze, that's another sign that he may be around. Um, and pay attention to your, again, your uh, emotions. If you're starting to feel more calm in a situation after you've called upon Sariel, that's a pretty good indicator that he's showed up to be like, okay, let's settle things down. This is a better option. This is where we're going to go. And you're going to notice that you just feel better about the decisions that you make. And that can change in a lot of ways. The other part with this, don't be tied to specific outcomes. When your soul's goals and dreams are coming forward, especially when you work with someone like Sariel, you're going to notice that you may be directed in a way that you didn't expect. Things may shift in ways that you're like, oh, well, that's different. I wasn't expecting this. I had this goal over here, but now I'm way over here. It's because this goal was ego-based. This goal is soul-based. That doesn't mean you may not get the ego one later, but this is where we're heading now. So there's a lot of interesting things when you work with the angels. And as far as um, Sar Sariel, we're going to kind of wrap it up there for now. Um, if you enjoyed this video and others like it, uh, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, all the youtube -y things. Um, let me know in the comments if you've ever had worked with this angel, if this is an angel that is familiar to you, new, however. Um, and I'm also always on the lookout for other angels. I have a list of them. Um, but if you have a suggestion, feel free to drop it. I have a whole bunch of... Uh, um, angel videos in the angel playlist on the channel tab here so you can check that out if you're on YouTube um, on Odyssey I don't haven't got quite got all that sorted yet but I'm working on it so <laughs> uh, with that have a great rest of your evening day or afternoon and I will talk to you in a future video